Hello and welcome to Breaking the Cycle. My name is Stephen. This is episode five. Today we're going to be discussing the 24-hour SCD yogurt. I'm going to show you how I do it in the kitchen. Uh, I'll give you some links for yogurt makers and we'll discuss briefly on why making the 24-hour yogurt is so important and what effects you can expect to get from it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so you're going to want your yogurt jars, there's a favourite book, um, funnel, measuring jug, some milk, obviously a pot, and this is my yogurt maker, which is a Flora, I'll put a link in the description, and the reason that I like this one is because you can set the temperature to exactly what you want. And then also the time goes all the way up to whatever you want as well. I think it goes up to 30 or something like that. So we're just looking for at least 24 hours. I just put it on for 24 hours. And that's generally all you need. This is the type of yogurt that I use for a starter. I'm in Australia obviously so uh, I just use this because I like the texture and it works. I've used it loads of times and it comes out pretty good so I'm sure there's better quality ones out there all organic or whatever it's just kind of trial and error and uh, I happen to know that this works fine so I just stick to what works you know another vital tool that you'll need is a thermometer get these pretty cheap on eBay and we want to get this up to 85 degrees Celsius and then we'll take it off the heat let it go below 40 degrees, put it into the fridge to speed up the process if you want, and then we will add our starter and mix it all together, put it into our little containers, and then into the yogurt maker for 24 hours. So I'm measuring out a liter and a bit of milk straight into the pot. And the reason we're doing this is um, you're looking to kill all the microbes that are in the milk. Although it's pasteurized, there's still microbes and stuff in there. So heating it up to 85 degrees will kill all them bad boys. And then we'll add our starter. And then all that will be in there is all of the good guys that are in this Greek yogurt. So it's really important to keep an eye on it when it gets to around this temperature. You don't want it to boil, uh, it really just wants to get up to 85 degrees. Once you hit that, that point, that's uh, enough to kill off the other microbes. And then yeah, just take it off the heat, it should be fine. But um, I always just keep an eye on it, and anyway, just in case the thermometer is a little bit off, uh, you just don't want it to start boiling, like I said. So it's nearly done now. Uh, it tends to kind of run away with itself as well as it heats up, but it'll take a while and then it just snowballs and, and speeds up really quickly. So getting around to it. About 85 degrees. Once it hits that, we'll take it off. All right, that should be it. Let's take it off. Alright, so starting to dip below the 40 degree mark, so it should be safe now to mix the yogurt in, and I'll show you that now. Alright, so what I do is mix, get about 150 ml, which is exactly one of my yogurt pots, and then I get my yogurt and mix it in. Alright, so I put basically the whole thing in. Obviously it'd be easier if I wasn't uh, recording myself as I'm doing it. Um, I think in the book it tells you like a specific amount to put in. But I find that, I hope it's fine, it does the job. 
Put it in there. And you mix it together and make a paste. Just nice and gently. Just try and get it to mix in nicely. Now this is our mixed yogurt and milk solution. Just get it back into the pot. Nice and thick. And then you want to mix it in. Don't go too aggressive with it, just give it a bit of a mix. It's be nice and even. You don't want to go too mad because you can kill the little microbes. Don't be whipping it. That should do. So, last one, it was easier just to uh, show you is one. It's a bit difficult when you're recording. A funnel is essential. You get yourself some funnels, it just makes everything so much easier. And then you want to leave see the way this one this one here it's probably a bit too full you want to leave a little bit of a gap give it a chance to breed uh, i found yeah if you go too far up it can be an issue so i generally speak and find one that's a little bit low and then just share it out a little bit and that's it so here's our milk that will get turned into yogurt I'll set it to 24 hours and that's it 24 hours later we'll get some amazing probiotic yogurt so one other thing if your pot turns up like this every single time I've made yogurt the pot has been like this and don't worry about it just steep it for a few minutes get yourself a uh, like a scrubber will do it, but I use um, the steel wool little Brillo pads you can get. That just makes it brand new again. But yeah, like I said, every single time I've done it, this is what happens. So I don't know how to avoid it. So don't worry about it. All right. So 24 hours later, this is our yogurt. You can see. good consistency you just stir it up gets rid of those kind of lumps and that and while it's still hot that's when I put my honey in just to help it um, mix up doesn't take much I don't mind it being a bit tart but uh, there's a little one where you just uh, mix it up and you put it into the fridge you get that normal creamy yogurt consistency. And I've also got some strawberries and passion fruit and now is a good time while they're hot just to mix it in that way it kind of uh, emulsifies inside the yogurt using the, the heat just to make it mix in a bit better. And that's it, yogurt's done. Alright so now that we know how to make the yogurt, why should we butter? There's a good um, resource here the healthygut.com um, I'll leave the link in the description as usual but it's a good article basically just describing how important the SCD yogurt is and, and the difference that I made with, with this fella's uh, personal experience so basically what we're interested in is uh, the difference between the yogurt and the probiotic supplements that you can get in the shop even the really good probiotic supplements don't compare at all. So you can see here um, the 24 hour yogurt versus probiotic supplements. So we've got a hundred trillion bacteria inside of us and some of the probiotic supplements will give you 1 billion to 5 billion CFUs, uh, especially potent ones give you 25 to 50 billion CFUs. In the SED yogurt, you'll get 700 billion CFUs in a cup of 24-hour yogurt. So basically per serving, you're getting 700 billion 
CFUs compared to maximum 50 billion CFUs in store-bought probiotic tablets. So there's no comparison, you know what I mean? Um, it's just, it's not that hard to make either. It's um, pretty easy. Like in the video there that I showed you, you can see that there's some lumps and stuff in it, but even when it's like that, like just stir it up, put it into the fridge, but finally take it out again, it, you don't even notice the lumps. Like, so at the end of the day, it's fermented milk. Like you just gave it into you. All the good guys are still in there. Um, so I was struggling to find my yogurt maker managed to track it down and one thing that you really have to be careful of with the yogurt makers is that a lot of the commercial ones are the ones that you can get like for instance uh, on amazon here it doesn't say anything about a timer so a lot of them will just be for like eight hours they just automatically go in push the button turns on eight hour fermenting fermentation process and then that's it which we don't want we want the 24 hour one so I found that um, if you look on eBay here, pretty reasonable price, $50 uh, Australian. But if you look for a rice uh, wine maker, because they tend to ferment the rice wine over a longer period of time. And you can also use it as a yogurt maker because it's basically the same thing as a temperature function and a timer. And we're interested in keeping it on for as long as possible, 24 hours at least. So the rice wine maker might be an avenue to go down. Uh, the one that I use, I have it a good few years, it hasn't caused me any dramas, does the job, 50 bucks, can't really argue with that. I'm sure there's many other better quality ones out there, but if it does the trick, then um, it doesn't really matter as far as I'm concerned. I don't need like brand names or anything. All right, so there you go. Uh, now you know how to make the SCD yogurt and why it's so beneficial. And from personal experience, it does make a difference. You can feel the difference. It, it just helps with the uh, bowel motions and stuff like that. Your gut feels more settled and you just really enjoy getting it into you because you know it's so good for you. It's really versatile. I can throw it in on top of my smoothies in the morning, just uh, whiz it up, drink it that way, or bring it into work, just have a little pot, just bring it in, eat it after your meal, or you can use it like to actually make... Um, some savory dishes like in the book there's one for uh, uh ginger yogurt chicken where you get almond flour mix it with the yogurt bit of ginger make a paste and put it over the chicken put it in the oven that's lovely as well that's another way of getting them into you so it's really versatile it should be done uh, it should be like a cornerstone of the SED diet really you need to do it so it's all about getting on top of the um good flora getting the good guys overpopulating the bad guys limiting the food that the bad guys feed on while promoting the foods that the good guys want and hopefully just get that balance back and everything kind of stems from there so and uh, now you know how to do it go get it done and uh, i'll see you next time good luck